Okay. Show me. Hi guys, welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for another video on uh, this transmitter. Well, not only this transmitter, but basically all fly sky transmitters. Even though I think this is the most serious <laughs> fly sky transmitters uh, that are available right now. They'll change actually in the future. They'll have a, uh, a normal style, a box style, box style. A big transmitter uh, on the market as well, a new one. But for now, I think this is, uh, at least if you are flying FPV drones, this is the, the most legitimate option in the fly sky realm. One of the problems we used to have with fly sky uh, were the receivers. I'm sure you'd agree that the choice of receivers available for fly sky systems wasn't as good as with FR Sky. With FR Sky, you've got nice and small receivers with telemetry, with good range. Fly Sky, meh, they were either bulky or didn't have a full range or diversity. In this video, we'll be taking a look at five receivers for Fly Sky. Yeah, um, I actually have four of them and one is on its way and we'll have a look at that one first. All right, so this receiver I have uh, on the way. I've uh, ordered one, but it's not in yet. However, if you have a look at the, the photo, the product picture over here, as you can see, it is nice and small, which is obviously what we want. But it also has two antenna, yay, so it should be a what we'd call a full range receiver with diversity and it has a little plug over here. Basically I would prefer solder on wires, but that might just be a personal thing. It costs less space in your quadcopter than a connector such as this one. Other, ah, here's another product picture and uh, yeah nice and small so it should even for the smallest of drones uh, quadcopters here here's a very small indoors quadcopter uh, well basically in, to my mind this receiver is kind of too big for this very small quadcopter but for your 3 inch, 2 inch, up to, well, uh, obviously for uh, larger drones, this receiver should be an option. It has telemetry, uh, regrettably not a battery telemetry. I'm actually not even completely sure how that works in the fly sky realm. Uh, maybe you can inform me, but uh, it has RSSI telemetry, so your radio uh, we'll know what the reception quality is like. And it can uh, relay the battery voltage uh, or, or wait the, the voltage uh, the receiver receives. Which is kind of, well, useless. Kind of useless. If you run a, a, a nitro plane or a gas plane, then in that case that'll be useful. But in all other instances, uh, if you fly uh, FPV quadcopters or electric planes, I don't see the use for a uh, battery uh, voltage for your receiver to be available in your transmitter. Oh well. And um, well, so it's, this is one is nice and small. Uh, two antenna should be ver a very good option for drone or quad pilots that want to switch or are flying with fly sky systems. So guys, four receivers from two different sources. Now the first two you see over here actually came with the Nirvana transmitter. At least if you get it from Banggood, which I have. So these were freebies for me. And if you, again, if you order this transmitter from Banggood, you get these two receivers. These two receivers you see here are from Hobby King actually and as you know, um, as you might know, 
Hobby King has been uh, selling the Trilogy Evolution, which is basically the previous version of the NV14 Nirvana radio. So it makes sense that Hobby King sells a couple of Flysky receivers, Flysky compatible receivers, which you see here. Now, all but one of these receivers can do either SBUS or IBUS or PPM. This one I think can only do SBUS or IBUS. Again, all the others can do either SBUS, IBUS or PPM. Not that it really matters. Um, do you actually use PPM still? <laughs> um, no, I, I don't think so. PPM is kind of a thing of the past. I think that using IBUS on FlySky receivers is preferable because uh, you should be able to get telemetry that way. The first little receiver over here. This one's called the uh, X8B. And regrettably I haven't come across any listings on sales sites for this receiver yet, as of the time of this recording. Uh, yeah, this is a very small uh, receiver. Obviously it's uh, not full range. It only has one antenna and a very small one at that compared to this Trilogy receiver, as you see, far longer antenna. That makes it uh, suitable for uh, micro quadcopters in my mind. It's uh, very nice and small and uh, lightweight, won't take a up a lot of room at all. And let me see, yeah, because I haven't found any uh, sales listings on this receiver. There's no documentation on it either, but it only has three strands on this cable. So plus ground and a signal and I assume that that signal is either SBUS or IBUS. That's my assumption. And I don't even see a bind button on this receiver. So from that I assume that this receiver will be in bind mode uh, for the first five seconds that you turn it on, that you power it on, as uh, some other receivers also do. So uh, yeah, it must be something like that because there is no button. Okay, so that makes uh, perfect sense to me, I think, uh, and that, uh, that is a easy way of binding your model. The second receiver you see here is called the IA8S from Flysky. It is a genuine Flysky receiver. And um, as of the time of the shooting of this video, uh, again, this was uh, supplied with the radio. And I'll have a link to this receiver at Underground FPV site. I haven't come across, across this receiver on other sales sites yet. Uh, by the time you are watching this video, uh, it might be available on other sales sites, so we'll look it up. But um, okay, so it has uh, this here cable, and this cable only has three strands, just like this little one over here. So the cable is meant for either SBUS or IBUS. This connector, however, has four pins, so if you move this yellow wire over in the connector, you can use PPM if you'd so want to. Now obviously this receiver is bigger than this one, but this, this receiver can definitely be used in say 5 inch or 4 inch quadcopters. 3 inch? Eh, might be a little uh, big for 3 inch quadcopters. So in, uh, it has uh, 3 antennas, it comes with 3 antennas. Uh, what? 3 antennas? Uh, one is a spare. And uh, they clip on with these uh, UFL connectors as you can see. So if you damage one you can replace the antenna. Yay! Okay, I personally again would have liked it to come with uh, without a connector. The connector you see over here. It would have made the receiver a little f flatter, smaller. However, on this side of the receiver you can see a lot of solder points. Now, there is not a whole lot of documentation on this receiver yet, but I can imagine that you can solder up wires to these solder pads over here and uh, take off, remove this connector over here if you want to make it a little smaller. 
The next receiver, and again this one is from uh, Hobby King, is a TGI, Turnigy, I8, the IA6C. It's been around for a while. And again, this one does PPM, SBUS or IBUS, and it has uh, plus and ground. Now it, it has a second port over here, that white little port, which uh, can be used for external sensors. And yeah, that is a bit of an uh, old world solution, I guess. Uh, you can use it, of course, but yeah. We have flight controllers these days, right? And they already have all kinds of sensors. So this extra port shouldn't be needed by the time you are watching this uh, video. In the past, yeah, nice. And if, yeah, no, no I don't really see a use for that. Uh, it does come with a cable for that. This is your data cable, I guess. And it comes with this here cable. Uh, this time it has uh, four strands, as you can hopefully see, so um, one of those you will not be using. And uh, which one is that? Uh, yeah, the yellow one you won't be using, that one is for PPM. So you can simply clip that off and uh, have three wires for your receiver. The last one is again one from Hobby King, is, it is the FSA8S. Now, I think this receiver resembles the first one most. It is a little bigger, as you can see, and regrettably it, yeah, it has an, uh, a connector again, a, a white connector, making it bigger than it needs to be. But, uh, well, um, if you don't know how to solder, and soldering up small pads on a receiver like this can be challenging, so this might be a better solution for uh, people that don't want to solder. Uh, it comes with this cable, and again this is a four strand cable. One of those you will not be using, this one is for PPM. So you can simply remove that yellow cable and you'll be left with three strands plus ground and signal, IBUS or SBUS. Okay, next thing I'll do is actually install this here, this Turnigy receiver, into a 5 inch uh, quadcopter and have a look uh, what telemetry data we get, if any. So, let's have a looky. Okay, so here is a look at the guts of my quadcopter, the quadcopter I'm converting to FlySky. Here is my receiver and as you can probably tell that receiver is kinda <laughs> big. Yeah, uh, this is the receiver I took out of the quadcopter. This is an uh, FR Sky R XSR, so not the RXSR but the XSR. As you can hopefully tell that receiver is a lot smaller. It is uh, shorter, it is more narrow. And ho hopefully you can see that uh, well enough. And it is a lot thinner, approximately, well, less than half the thickness. So, yeah, this, this receiver, this uh, Turnigy receiver will fit, but mostly because I've got a lot of room in this quadcopter. It'll actually fit in, in between the, the frame, like so. Yeah. Um... Uh, it's not a problem, it, it fits, but I kind of think that this receiver is not ideal for uh, quadcopters. If you are building a plane with a flight controller, so in that case you can use an SBUS or IBUS receiver, uh, in that case this receiver would be an option. Second problem, well problem, second problem I have is that I can't get IBUS to work with this receiver. Maybe it's me or maybe it's the, the newish transmitter I'm using, but uh, I can uh, get it to work uh, with SBUS, no problem at all. Uh, everything works just fine, so I'll be flying it with SBUS. Yeah, it should be able to run IBUS, right, this receiver, but I can't get it to work. Uh, yeah. Um, basically, what I think is that that iRange receiver I showed you in this uh, video, the first one I showed you, is a far better option. It's far smaller and uh, lightweight, uh, far easier to build into quadros.
Okay, I'll button things up and then we'll uh, take this quattro for a spin to see if everything actually works. All right, uh, regrettably I only have a small field <laughs> for me today. Over there there are people uh, playing soccer, there's practice I guess uh, over there there are as well. And over there the field is being watered, sprayed down. Doesn't really matter, I just want to see if it uh, flies, right? So I've set up uh, two switches, this one over here to, on my left index, is this the index finger? Uh, index finger is my uh, arming and beeper. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear the beeper. Uh, probably not. It's a bit in the grass. It's dampened. Okay, on the on my other index finger, I've got my modes over here, three position switch, and that is basically it. Yeah. So uh, let's see if it actually flies. Uh, at least it arms. That's a good start. All right, all directions uh, move in the expected direction. Yay, cool stuff. So um, I guess this uh, works out. Now I'll uh, obviously be properly testing things uh, FPV with a goggle on my head, but uh, this works. This works as advertised. So uh, yeah, this will. This is actually. Oops. This is actually my uh, maiden multi-rotor flight with this FlySky transmitter. And um, yeah, so far so good. Yeah, and I can even do flips. I'm still in the uh, in the honeymoon uh, period with this transmitter, meaning that I'm uh, getting used to things. The stick feel, primarily. But uh, no problem at all, it flies. Cool stuff, man. And let me see if I can actually find the disarm switch. Yeah, I can. Okay, so uh, that's it. It uh, works. Yeah, uh, again, this, this receiver is a bit big. The benefit of it is that I can easily see if it's bound. Over here is my receiver. I hope you can actually see that. So I have a good view on uh, the LED on that uh, receiver. Other than that, yeah, it's a bit big. It fits, but it's it, this is a big receiver. If you have info on this receiver, uh, what that button does, because this receiver has a button right over here. And there's no info, the documentation, the manual doesn't say uh, what that button does. No one on RC Group seems to know that what that button does. Uh, maybe that button is to switch the receiver from SBUS into IBUS, but yeah, there's no way of telling. Um, yeah, I've tried things of course, but uh, oh well. Uh, at least it flew. I hope this uh, video was uh, somewhat uh, informative and um, if new receivers for FlySky 4, especially for multi-rotors, racing quadcopters uh, uh, are released. Uh, I'll give you an update on that. I'll uh, show you those receivers uh, in detail as well. If you have questions, hit me up a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer you. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.